Enoch is not part of the Bible. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, you find maybe just one phrase about Enoch, that's all. But among the apocryphic texts, there are volumes and volumes if you know them. You find the book of Enoch. Enoch is the first person in antiquity who writes in the first person. I did, I hear, I was there. In one of the ancient texts, this great-grandfather of Noah is said to have been taken away by God for 300 years. He was taken up to the sky. Up there he meets the highest, the so-called highest in religion, they call it God. He meets the highest and the highest says to his servants, you teach this young man in our language and then you teach him writing. So he writes books. Of course, he knows all these foreigners by name. He quotes them by name. He knows their profession. He knows which of these extraterrestrials was the astronomer. So Enoch is the only and first person, thousands of years ago, who gives some of the names of the extraterrestrials and gives some of their professions. How is this possible? We have an eyewitness and nobody speaks about it. So I really was confused. Throughout the ancient Sanskrit epics of India, there are numerous descriptions of Vimanas, or mythical flying machines. One of these accounts even dates back over 5,000 years. In the Bhagavat Purana, which is an ancient Sanskrit history, there is a description of a spacecraft that was piloted by a king named Shalva. It's described that it was made of metal, it was described that it sometimes appeared to be in two places at once. It was described as having a motion similar to that of a butterfly. And these descriptions are consistent with what people who observe UFOs today report. In other Sanskrit text, such as the Mahabharata, the Rig Veda, and the Ramayana, there can be found descriptions of Vimana measuring as wide as 100 feet and often equipped with the capabilities of modern aircraft. One Vimana produced a shaft of light, which when focused on a target, consumed it with its power. They read like the wildest science fiction. People are flying around in airships called Vimanas, blasting each other and having aerial fights, destroying entire cities. And the crazy thing is, that all of those stories are totally accepted in the modern society of India. In 1929, historians discovered a map which had been painted onto a piece of gazelle hide. They traced the document back to a 16th century Turkish admiral named Piri Reis. But in stark contrast to other maps dating back to that time, the map depicts land masses that were still, as yet, unexplored. It shows the coast of Antarctica as it exists under the current ice cover. Now that's really pretty amazing because it would tend to indicate that the map was made at a time when Antarctica was ice free, which would be many millions of years ago. The map also accurately charts the coasts of Europe and North Africa. But it's the illustration of northern Antarctica that truly astonishes ancient astronaut theorists. Because this region wouldn't even be discovered for another 300 years. We have to remember that Antarctica is covered by at least a mile thick ice. We didn't have ground penetrating radar until 1958. So for a map to exist in 1531 accurately showing the topography is pretty interesting.